Let's be real, maths either makes you feel like a complete genius or a complete idiot. This simple subject with just one right answer should be simple, but yet it's so hard to understand sometimes and it's the bane for a lot of students. What if I told you you were never bad at maths, you were just taught it the wrong way? Because school teaches you to follow steps right, but the top students, they see patterns like a language. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to think like them, how to actually finally make maths your best subject, even if it feels like it's in another language. Let's start with the brutal truth. The brutal truth, maths, maths isn't a genius gene subject, although it can seem like that a lot of the time. It's actually one of the very few subjects where hours in equals progress out. If you spend hours doing practice questions, spotting out patterns, you will see results. And, you can, and I can see your smile going away when, after I said that. Bro, what, just burn the hours and you'll see the effort. That's so cliche. But although you might kind of think it's a bad thing, actually, it's a really good thing. Because you know for a fact, as a guarantee, if you do put in the hours, you will become better. Each question you do teaches your brain a recurrent pattern. Factorizing on quadratic, it's all a pattern. Completing the square, a pattern. Turning a messy word problem into an equation, it's a pattern. People who are good at maths don't think harder, they just learn how to recognize faster. And the reason they can do this so fast is because they've seen that exact type of question or problem 50 times before. It's like learning a keyboard shortcut, right? When you first ever learn how to like type a type or like uh, use a computer, and they taught you back in the day when you were a baby how to do control C, control V, you probably were like, ooh, 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 control C, and then control V every time you try to use that thing, right? But now when you're doing your schoolwork and using Word, you don't even need to look at your keyboard when you type or use control C, control V, right? That's just literally because of repetition and pattern exposure. And so this whole thing of some people are just talented and better at maths isn't true. Talent is actually just early exposure to patterns. The smart kid in your class isn't actually smarter, their brain just has a bigger pattern library. So here's how you can also build on. Here's how you start. You, have, you, you wanna run this pattern trigger checklist each time you face a question. Ask yourself, firstly, the form. What type of question is it? Is it asking for a quadratic and exponential? Is it a geometry question? And then second, look for trigger words. What hints are buried in this question? Rate, turning point, similar, log, proof. Then three, tool. What one or two moves actually does that? require so to factorize substitute differentiate and then four goal what are they actually asking for solve proof maximize every maths problem falls under these four categories once you really think about exactly what it is in each of these four steps that's how you get better at recognizing questions because once you do this enough times you can you actually start to spot the pattern before finishing the question a very standard easy maths question find the turning point of a quadratic let's say x squared minus 6x plus 5. your brain should instantly go what's the form okay it's a quadratic trigger turning point, which means to find the vertex. Tool, okay, I need to complete the square or use minus b over 2a. A goal, to find the coordinates, right? Boom, you know, you now know the pattern, which is the same for all of these questions. And what you actually want to do is you want to build up these recipes. That's why I like to call them. Each maths question can be broken down into a series of steps, recipes that you can follow to get to the end. And this is what I also did recently while revising for my maths test. And it just comes through a lot of pattern exposure. For example, when I see a question that is like, find the number of real roots of a quartic or a quintic, I know every single time instantly, all I need to do is differentiate, set it to zero, Sub that back into the normal equation to find the corners of the turning point, plot them on the graph and then sketch it and see how many times it crosses the x-axis and then that's exactly how many real solutions it has. Or if it's a question asking to solve simultaneous equations of logs, I know I need want to use log laws and get them in their states of just two terms and then cancel them out. But then also, a common mistake that I've always made, but now it's actually just a part of my recipe, is to always check if the solution is greater than or equal to zero because you can't put a negative into a log, right? The point is, you need to be making these recipes. In a recipe, you want to have kind of stuff like what to do, but also what to avoid. And once you keep on building these up, it just becomes a game of recognizing faster. Because remember, memorization is weak. You can't rely on it for maths. Because if it's a slightly different question comes up, you're not going to be able to do it. But when you recognize a pattern, you can apply that to so many different things. And the next thing you need to do to get better at maths is to build your foundations. Because now you're grinding reps and you're building pattern recognition. But here's where most people mess up. They're pouring water into a bucket full of holes. And you, because you know that feeling when a hard question just feels impossible and you stare at it, and you stare at it for five minutes and your brain just completely goes blank. And that's not actually because you're dumb. It's because somewhere underneath, one of your fundamentals are cracks. And if your fundamental and if your foundation, your fundamental are broken, no amount of fancy problem solving is going to stick. You can't build a skyscraper on sand. For example, look at this tough trick problem that was in my exam. And although yes, the key skill is like graphing and like inequalities, I wouldn't even be able to tackle this problem if I don't know how to solve cos x equals zero. And you'd be surprised, like when I'm revising with my friends, I'm talking to some of my other students, they're focused on solving these really big problems. 
problems. But when I ask you to just break it down and then solve cos x equals zero, which is the core skill that you need to solve any trick question, they're shaky. They don't know how to do it. Their fundamental is weak. And when you don't have those, you're not going to be able to do these hard questions. Like even the earlier example of finding the turning point, that all relies on some fundamentals because you can't do that if you don't know how to differentiate or complete the square. Maths is a subject where you always stack on top of another, right? Like even really tough topics, they're just kind of like you can break them down into a bunch of smaller topics. And so you can't think to master calculus if you don't know how to do basic algebra. You can't master probability if you don't know how to do fractions properly. So it's not talent, you're just missing a building block. So here's what you have to do. Take one topic or area where you found from a hard question you got stuck at and spend just one day going through the simplest drills you can find. Textbooks are actually designed in this way. The earlier exercises start with the foundation and then they get more and more layered and test you in more complex ways as the chapter progresses. So actually going back into the earlier exercises in your textbook is a really good way to, to kind of drill your foundations. And once you do this, the concepts that start to feel impossible start to all click in place because you finally solve that missing piece of the problem. And then the next thing is a smart practice loop. Because your foundation is now all patched up, you have a solid base, no more leaks. But here's the part that a lot of students end up giving up because does this sound like you? You sit there for hours grinding a question, thinking that you're gonna get it right, but then you end up getting it wrong and you feel dumb and you really don't like maths anymore because you just spent all that time thinking you understood it when actually you just got it wrong. But the thing is that this is studying wrong because you don't get better by studying endless endlessly in this kind of negative feedback cycle. You get better by shortening the feedback loop entirely. Here's what I call the smart practice loop, the ultimate way to practice maths without burning up. And it goes like this. When you first see a question, instead of diving straight in, outline the approach in your head. What's the topic? What's the goal? What's the first thing that I would try? Because if you've got a starting point, go for it. But after a while, if you're completely lost, stop. And then, then you want to look at the solution on purpose. And this might seem counterintuitive, but hear me out. Don't treat the answer key like cheating. You want to treat it like coaching. Go line by line and ask, why did they do that step? What hint in the question told them to start there? What pattern or formula did they use? Because you're not actually copying. You're just synthesizing the thought process. Then you want to close the solution and try it again without looking at your notes or at the solutions. Because then you're trying to replicate what they did step by step as if you were teaching someone else. If you get stuck, you try the answer, you fill in the gap and then you repeat. You do this until you can fully do it on your own and that's when it's locked in. This loop turns every single question into two lessons. One from the question itself and one from the mistake that you just fixed. It's like double XP for your brain. And here's the science behind it. When you look at the answers, your brain still processes the correct pattern as a recognition hit. Then when you redo it independently, it becomes a retrieval trance, which literally strengthens the memory. But you only get the benefit of doing this when you actually redo the question, because reading the answer doesn't actually cut. You have to close it and then try again for yourself. As I always talk about, just reading the answer or rereading anything, in fact, it's just passive learning. Passive learning doesn't stick. If you want an actual real progress, you need to do it. So each time you redo a question successfully, make a list and put it in the master section. And when you, when you see that list grow, it gets addictive and, and it gamifies studying maths. Each line isn't just a random question done, it's a pattern. And a quick break, if you're looking for a fun way to study maths, you really need to check out Medley AI. It's not just another question bank. It actually gives you interactive past papers that you can work through, like in a real exam. And here's my favorite part. You can write your answers by hand and Medley AI's handwriting feature instantly reads what you've written and gives step-by-step -step feedback. It's freakishly accurate, even when my seven looks like a one. So if you're serious about improving your exam technique and you wanna make studying maths more fun, give Medley AI a try, links in the description. But straight back to the video. The thing that we were talking about of you did a question, you thought it was right, but you got it wrong. Although that can be really demoralizing, it's like the most valuable thing when it comes to maths. Because if you think about it, the most dangerous thing when it comes to maths, it's knowing the wrong thing. Because if you don't know, you could always just learn the right thing by revising. But if you know something incorrectly, if for example, you had a fundamentally wrong idea of how graph transformations work, that's really dangerous. And the reason that getting a question wrong that you thought you got right is so valuable. It's because you can expose this. Maths is just a series of pathfinding from the start to the end. You take paths that you think are correct to end up to the end. But when you actually think you got that right, you thought you took all the right paths. So when you actually go back and review, it's really valuable because you can directly pinpoint where your flawed thinking was wrong. What assumption that you made was incorrect. For example, I was doing graph transformations for a while, right? And when I was doing this question, I thought I got it right, but actually it was wrong. Because, and then when I traced back my working, I found there was this one specific step where it's like, when you have a function, right, f of x plus two, for example, 
I thought when you uh, want to squash it towards um, the like squash it horizontally, uh, I thought you divide the whole thing within the f of x by two, which is actually incorrect. And that was a fundamentally flawed assumption that I was making. Actually, you only put uh, the you only divide the x by two, right? So if it was f of x plus two, you do f of x over two plus two to squash it. But I I thought that was the wrong thing. But thank God I found that earlier, right? Because imagine. I carried that fundamental like wrong belief into an exam, I'd have lost so many marks. So always ask yourself, what assumption was it that made me get this question wrong and fix it for good? It's such a valuable way of studying maths and it saves me so much time. And just before we get on to the most important part, which is mistakes logging, which every mathematician, every Asian who's good at maths does. If you're watching this and you actually want me to walk you through how to build your perfect smart practice system, which will save you hours of wasted grind, that's exactly what we do inside the Student Accelerator, my program. So I help students like you set up a personalized smart practice routine. You get access to all of my pattern packs and past paper drills and a bank of maths past paper questions, as well as weekly Q&A calls and an entire classroom full of how to study for good. If you ever wish that someone could just show you how to exactly study and get top grades this is it the doors are open right now and i'll leave a link below in the description so that you can join and start your first week today but now let's get on to the real game changer which is how to log your mistakes and never repeat them again okay so this is the part that most skip but it's the real separator between students who improve fast and students who keep making the same mistakes every test again and it's called mistakes logging and it's the most and it's the secret weapon of top students you want to be treating each of your mistakes as a new data point and they have actually have the most potential for growth because if you make a mistake that sh shows you as i kind of just saw uh as, as i kind of briefly touched upon before where your weakness is if you were to do an exam right now you would get that wrong so patching this up turning your strength into a weakness is the most crucial part of studying and revision and especially for maths let me show you my mistakes notes when i was revising for the semester test as you can see i did past papers from 2016 all the way to 2023 as i went through i highlighted the question that i got wrong and then i also wrote a hint what was the assumption that made me get this wrong and as you can see i wrote them out then i did them again and then when i got them right i undid the highlighting but then there was still some left i did them again and again and again and what you're seeing right now is the fourth version as you can see even after doing them four times i'm still getting some questions wrong and that really shows me the weakness that i had but i was able to patch up and get a lot of them right actually when i did them again because let me tell you when i when i was first um after the first time doing them the majority of the page was read. I don't know, maybe I'm just bad at maths or it was a hard test, probably a bit of both. But yeah, the point is you want to track your mistakes and do them again. And the most valuable revision that you actually ever do is just going back and redoing your mistakes when after you track them, like you can see here. You can also paste in some key formulas, some things that can speed up the process like I did. And it all becomes kind of like a personalized revision hub of not only your weaknesses, but what you can be fixing and what you should be remembering. And it's an... And, 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 and all top students do this. They don't chase perfection, they chase elimination of old mistakes. And each week you get fewer errors, faster solutions than higher scores. That's how it all goes. And lastly, number five, exam mode. So you've built your patterns, you've built your foundations and you've locked in your mistakes. How can you actually translate this into a higher math score? Because you can know everything, but if you fall under pressure, it doesn't matter. So here's how you train how you'll play. When you study, stop doing it like it's homework. Tell yourself that you're actually in the room. Timing yourself while doing math questions actually has been one of my best things that I've done because I never used to do it. But when I actually time myself, I found that for a lot of questions, I was doing them really inefficiently. And inefficiency is one of the things that you have to weed out in maths, but it's not directly obvious because I can get a minimum like question, um, maths question right by doing differentiation. But I found that while timing it, that took me like 10 minutes per question, where it should be taking me like three. That was a key indicator, although I wasn't actually directly getting the answer wrong, I was getting the correct answer, that I should be completing the square instead because that's far, far quicker. You also want to do full-time past papers to get used to having to switch between different topics very, very quickly. You also get used to the exam pressure, and you can also see how many silly mistakes you make under time pressure. Because for a lot of students, silly mistakes is the main reason they lose marks in their maths exams, right? So you can weed these out and see where they come up by doing past papers. And so when you have a test coming up, focus on doing timed questions or timed full past papers, and then spending 20% of your time refreshing concepts. You're no longer learning, you should be rehearsing for your performance. You don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your training. So make sure your training looks exactly like your real exam. So that's it. That's the full system of how you go from ISAC and maths to actually how you can actually start to make it click 
and make maths your best subject. And it's daunting, it's tiring, it's a long video, or, or, but also the things I mentioned isn't a one day fix, remember? The first thing I actually said was it will be a grind. It, you will have to put in the hours. But now you know exactly where to put in the hours. And if you do this, I guarantee you, you will become the best in your class at maths. But if you want to shortcut the trial and error, you want me to build your perfect study system for you. What patterns to drill, how to log and eliminate your mistakes. If you do, if you join the student accelerator, you get my full way of how to study, weekly coaching calls, exclusive past people question banks, and direct feedback so you never have to guess how to study correctly. So if you're serious about becoming a top student, make sure to check that link out first in the description and we'll make your next exam the one where you finally see the marks that you've always been chasing. But that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video and found this helpful, please leave a comment. But as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Boo.